Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are around this beautiful planet of ours. Hope you got your sweat on, ate a good brekkie, and you have spent some time with loved ones. Today's video, we are kicking it off with a green tea. Let me know in the comments for the YouTube algorithm, tea, coffee, or some water. All right, before we dive in, I'm heading home to Australia today, so if there's no video update tomorrow, that's why I'm traveling. It takes a bit of time to travel, especially when you live in Australia. Today's video update, let's run through the reversal signals and then some potential traps to the upside uh, to look out for in case this market doesn't drop any further. Now, I'm not saying that it will drop further or won't drop further. Honestly, no one knows what is going to happen. All we're doing is trying to balance the probabilities after we have analyzed the chart to the best of our ability. That's all it is when it comes to trading and investing. Unfortunately, there's no crystal balls, but we do our best to hold the balls in this video. All right, like, subscribe, bell notification icon, all of those shield things. And thanks for your comments over on Instagram. Link in the video description uh, for all your questions. I have answered them over on Instagram. So check them out there. All right, guys, Bitcoin after yesterday came down to the low here of 18,600, and we got a slightly lower low than that previous range and the low came in at 18,255. I want to note here that we've only had two closes below $19,000. I think that's pretty important in case we come back down to that level. So you can see the close that we had on the selling climax back on the 18th of June was at $18,949. The only other close was back here on the 6th of September, just a couple hundred dollars lower. Now we've continued to trend down. We've begun to get a lot more lower closes. The volume for me so far in Coinbase still isn't showing that strong demand from the buyers. However, it can show what I think is a short-term movement. Now, of course, I can be wrong. I'm gonna see that if the market obviously drops below these levels and closes below 19,000. After we've identified here that there's only been two closes so far, uh, and the most recent one was on the 6th, that to me would be a, a further weakness even if the price happens to hold up for the next day or two. All right, so moving on from the 19K, that's gonna be one of my, my key levels that I wanna watch where this market closes. To the upside, should we get a reversal and we get that flip from the bearishness to the bullishness to take out the bear market downtrend, which we'll cover in another chart in just a moment. These targets here, reversal targets, watch 20,500, that's the 50% range here from the top to the current low, and this is obviously dy dynamic in case the new low comes in, but for now, 20,500. You know 20,700 has been a key player in the market for quite some time, these last three, three and a half months or so, so keep an eye on that. So around that mid 20,000, my next reversal target, it, target is the peak that came in on the 13th of September, 22,800. So we're around number 23, and it's very, very close to the Wyckoff bullish flip number I've had here since the bar, this breakdown here on the 19th. So $23,200. So if you wanna just forget the 22.8 and just keep one number in mind, my still, my key level here is 23,200. So if we see a few little bounces here moving about, it's pretty much just intermediate bullishness, the hope, the lows in, that sort of stuff. We really need to see the market come back up, break around that 23K to give us that momentum to the bullish side, at least according, of course, to, to my data and my analysis here on the chart. In the short term, the market has stopped crashing. It doesn't take a genius to spot that one, and I'm sure you guys will be the first to tell me that I am definitely no genius. Looking at these lows, we've had a nice higher close above them, and these are the next levels that we wanna watch for in order to get that flip. In the meantime, to me, a lot of the movement would be just noise. Now this could break down quickly. We do get that bounce. The volume hasn't necessarily come through to give us that nice support like what we saw on the selling climax on the 18th of June. You can see the volume was a lot higher on this bar here. It was the highest out of any of these other days in the last three and a half months. So we haven't reached that stage yet. But it doesn't mean we can't get a small short-term bounce on here and hit some resistance levels, some traps, and then start to head back down. If you saw that, then you could probably say, look, we're about to come back and test that 19, that 18.6K. 
And if you then start to see a close beneath those levels and the market hold out, you're probably going to look for lower prices uh, from that period. Fear and greed is sitting at 23, so it's still an extreme fear. But I just want to note that the prices are relatively the same as what they were back in the extreme fear at a level of 15 or under on the fear and greed chart here. You can see these pricings are coming in at 10, 13, 11, and the price was about the same as it was in June, July as what it is now, except the fear is less. Yes, it is still extreme fear, but it's less. It's kind of like what they're talking about with inflation. Inflation was expected to be lower, but it's still less than what it was. So that is also a fear in the market, even though it's not as bad as it was. Moving on to Ethereum and to all the guys who managed to avoid the merge hype FOMO, congratulations. Yet again, I know this is probably the third video that I've congratulated you, but it is a very difficult thing to avoid the FOMO, especially when everyone's talking about it with huge upside targets. So if you missed the FOMO run and you wanna get back in, you can basically do it now at the same price pre-merge hype. This yellow line across the chart here, this horizontal, shows you the closing prices of those days when the market just started to break out of the accumulation pattern before it ran up to $2,031. We're all the way back down to that level. So anyone buying in that hype was essentially just hype and now the market's back at that same price. So this isn't to say that the market can't go lower, but it's just saying it's at the same price as it was uh, pre-merge hype. Over the last 24 hours, Ethereum has also found a way to hold support above the previous uh, accumulation zone, and that zone was at around $1,280. So the crash stopped at about $1,279. That was the low. Uh, same sort of analysis that I'm doing here with Bitcoin, looking for those reversal targets to the upside. Even if we get a bounce, that doesn't necessarily mean that the downside is over yet. I'd want to see it overcome the 50% here, so this is at 14,555, 1655, that's the 50% for the down range, and then my Wyckoff flip here, 1850. So using the same reasons here for the Wyckoff flip, you can see this bar was extra long, high volume, very low close, you know, compared to what we had today, we had a high close, so we had a very low close, and uh, we want to see the top price of that particular bar get taken out. So looking at that for Ethereum, that's 1,850. $50. You can see this peak just $1.70 less. So let's go for $18.50. That's my Wyckoff flip target here. That's for that stronger reversal and potentially the break of the bear market downtrend. If the market's able to break the bear market downtrend, so this was put in from the all-time high to the first merge hype, if we can get past that, at least that's one more bullish checklist item checked off. Right, we want to see the break of the bear market downtrend, and you know, should that happen, well then that's going to take out the the Wyckoff flip and potentially hold the market up for a lot longer than what we have previously seen. So that's all that the break of the bear market downtrend is guaranteeing is that it's at least going to hold up the market for longer within a trading range. What we currently have of around 800 to wherever that top is, potentially 22 or 2300 dollars here and that will then go into a potential accumulation range. And from that point, we wait for the next signal for the accumulation range to confirm itself, which would then be a breakout to the upside. Long way from that point yet, but let's just see how these reversal um, signals go in the meantime. Number here is 1655, and I'd much rather see 1855 get taken out and obviously that gets us closer to that bear market downtrend breakout. To the downside, if ETH does break down and drop into the zone between 1,000 and 1,300, that would be my worst case grind zone. I wouldn't wanna see it go any lower than that point, otherwise it then puts in danger anything sub 1,000. So nothing is confirmed here. To me, this bar was just a um, intermediate stopping volume, uh, intermediate higher close, so an intermediate low essentially, and it could be two to seven days or so before we see some sort of resolution to this stop, whether it is going to be the final stop or if we're gonna see a breakdown from that point. So that's all I'm noting yesterday's crash bar four because it did get that extra high close and the volume wasn't anything overly significant 
from these particular exchanges. As for the total cryptocurrency market cap excluding Bitcoin and ETH, so call it altcoins and stablecoins, the market closed slightly higher than the previous close here at 360. It's still looking a little weak, so same sort of deal. We want to see the market get back above the 50% of the downside, so this down range here, halfway is $403 billion. It was rejected at these levels previously, and this has just turned out to be a nice 50% area. So moving forward for the altcoins and of course stablecoins, must get back above that point in order to then uh, put in some sort of short-term bullishness for the alts. For my own investing, it's still too early to be getting into altcoins at this stage. 10 to 15% to the upside isn't what I'm here for. I'm looking for the hundreds of a percent return, if not thousands. So I'm not that keen to test the waters and take the risk on something so small. I want to see a breakout. I want to see capitulation. It's not there yet for the total cryptocurrency market caps from the data on the chart. Over the next two to seven days, we're looking for those reversal targets. That's on Bitcoin, ETH and cryptocurrencies. Anything below that, to me, still spells danger to the downside, basically better buying opportunities. With that in mind, we did have that buying opportunity yesterday. Even though we think things can go lower, they don't have to go lower, and that's why we set cycle buy zones. In yesterday's video, I blatantly said, that is a buy zone for me. I've been posting to our members of the Investor Accelerator, my buy areas on Bitcoin, and I even posted it in a previous video here after I had bought those, mentioned it to the members, and just showed you exactly where I'm buying and why I'm buying in this Bitcoin buy zone. Of course, it can go down to $11,000, 11500 but I'm not trying to catch the bottom or catch the top. The whole point of investing to make money is just to take a chunk out of the middle. So obviously, you need to make money, take a chunk out of the middle, the easy slice of the cake, if you've got some analysis telling you this is a good area to be getting into the market, then action that plan. If you are waiting for extreme low prices because of someone telling you to, I wish you all the best. But I want everyone to succeed, make some money from these markets because the opportunities aren't going to be around forever, especially in cryptocurrency with how, I want to say easy because compared to traditional markets, it is a lot easier to be making money in crypto than it is in trading Forex or leverage trading on stocks and that sort of thing. So get your plans ready, uh, have your signals and your alerts in play to get that BTC, and then have the opportunity for the altcoin season should they come in months or years ahead. Next couple of things, breakdown levels. Of course, we need to be prepared for the downside, and like I just said there, those buying opportunities. Have those in play, ready to go, Remember August, September, we were looking out for this as being not the best times. We had a full September forecast video on the channel and also August, I'll do another one of those for October. So make sure you are subscribed with the bell notification icon turned on and like the video up so it comes up into your news feeds. So far, August, September, right on track. Let's see how October goes. I'm thinking we might see some upside in October after all of this downside pressure. Uh, until next time, and probably in Australia, have a good one. Peace out.